dear students today we will discuss about the multiplexing and demultiplexing in the communication so what is the multiplexing and demultiplexing what is the role of in communication field so multiplexing is the set of technique that allows the simultaneous transmission of multiple signals across a signal data link multiplexing is done using a device called multiplexer mux that combine n input lines to generate one output lines or many to one or many signal converted into the single signals at the receiving end a device called d multiplexing d mux is used that separate signal into its component signals one input and several outputs or one into many one signal converted into many signal in the d multiplexing process so in multiplexing there are different n input lines and these input lines converted with the help of multiplexer into the n channels and one link and again at the demultiplexer the one link or n channels convert into the n output lines so this is the processing in multiplexing and what is the advantage of multiplexing technique so more than one signal can be sent medium or a link effective use of the bandwidth of the medium in the multiplexing system so they are multiplexing but says no multiplexing so here in no multiplexing and multiplexing diagram so in no multiplexing diagram there is the different inputs connected to the different output devices by the one by one what in multiplexing technique there are many inputs or many input signal or many input data converted into the one path or one channel of the four channels into the and next in demultiplexing this one path or one channel converted again to the different and outputs so this is the multiplexing versus no multiplexing difference types of multiplexing so there are many types of multiplexing multiplexing basically converted or divided in three types first one is the frequency division multiplexing that is the analog technique second is the wavelength division multiplexing wdm that is the also analog technique and third one is the time division multiplexing tdm that is the digital multiplexing technique the time division or tdm multiplexing also divided in two parts one is the synchronous tdm and second is the asynchronous tdm so these are the different types of multiplexing in the form of analog and digital so what is the frequency division multiplexing fdm it is the part of analog technique it is a analog technique signals of different frequency are combined into composite signal and is transmitted on the 
single links. Bandwidth of a link should be greater than the combined bandwidth of the various channels. And uh, each signal is having different frequencies in FDM multiplexing systems. So channels are separated by the strips of unused bandwidth called guard band or to prevent overlapping. So the function of the guard band to prevent the overlapping. So that is the FDM frequency division multiplexing system. Application of FDM. So there are application of FDM. So first is the FDM is used for frequency modulation and amplitude modulation radio broadcasting. Second one, AM frequency range is the 530 to 1700 kilohertz. And range of the frequency in frequency modulation is the 88 to 108 megahertz. So this is the frequency range of the FM frequency system. FDM is used in television broadcasting and first generation cellular telephone also use this FDM techniques. FDM in time domain multiplexers. So there are different input signals which have the different frequency F1, F2 and F3. And these are multiplex and summing of these different signals into summing network. And after this multiplexing, these different input signals convert into the one signal that is the FDM in time domain form. And in multiplexing, there are used different modulation technique, which have the different signals of different frequency F1, F2, F3, so on. And the output of this multiplexer is the output FDM signal that is sending bandwidth to the on the channels. Next one is the demultiplexing technique in, in time domain system. So here is the FDM input signals and these FDM input signals divided into different inputs and the output of different filters have the different signals that have the different frequency. And these different frequency signals, which is more than one, convert into the output signal with the help of demultiplexing technique. And so the in this FDM signals convert into the different analog signals with the help of demultiplexing technique in time domain form. So in demultiplexing, the, we use the different filters and after the filtration of different input signals and we convert in different these signals into the output signals with the help of demodulation technique. This is the opposite 
process of the modulation techniques that is the in the demodulation technique and the output of here the different different output input output in uh, sorry output different frequency signals so these are the different output of the multiplexer systems next one is the wave division multiplexing wdm so wdm is an analog multiplexing technique working is same as fdm in wdm different signals are optical or light signals that are transmitted through optical fiber various light waves from different source are combined to form a composite composite signals that is transmitted across the channel to the receiver all the receiver side this composite signals is broken into different light waves by the multiplexing technique so this combining and the splitting of light wave is done by using a prism prism band beam of light based on the angle of incident and the frequency of wave light so this splitting of light wave is done by the prism that can be we see in this diagram there are the different input light signal with which have the different wavelength lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 and after multiplexer or multiplexing technique the different light signal transmitted on a single fiber optic cable and again the signal demultiplexed by the demultiplexing technique and output of the multiplexer is the different light signal which have the different wavelengths next one is the time division multiplexing tdm multiplexing so it is the digital multiplexing technique channel link is not divided on the basis of frequency but on the basis of time total time available in the channel is divided between several users each user is allotted a particular time interval called time slot or slice in tdm the data rate capacity of the transmission medium should be greater than the data rate required for sending or receiving device this is the tdm time division multiplexing systems types of tdm so they are two types first one is synchronous tdm and second one is asynchronous tdm mm -hmm. in synchronous tdm each device is given same time slot to transmit the data over the link whether the device has any data to transmit or not in tdm each device places its data onto the link when its time slot arrives each device is given the position of line turns by turn and if any device does not have data to send then it time slot remains empty time slots are organized into frames and each frame consists of one or more time slots in tdm synchronous systems if there are n sending devices 
there will be n slots in frames so in this diagram that is so the synchronous tdm system numbers of inputs here five number of slots in each frame five so that is the synchronous tdm systems what is the multiplexing process in synchronous tdm system in stdm every device is given opportunity to transmit a specific amount of data into the link each device gets its turns in fixed order and for fixed amount of time interleaving interleaving is done by character one byte each frame consists of four slot as there are four input devices and slot of some device go empty if they do not have any data to send so this is the tdm multiplexing system of synchronous tdm multiplexing systems and this diagram also so the b multiplexing system of the st dm what is the disadvantage of st dm in st dm the channel capacity cannot be fully utilized some of the slot go empty in certain frames so this is the advantage disadvantage of stdb stdm system this figure show the framing of bits synchronization pattern of the framing bits next one is the asynchronous tdm atdm there are different number of inputs that is 5 and number of slots in each frame 3 so this so the asynchronous tdm systems in asynchronous tdm also known as statistical time division multiplexing in this time slots are not fixed or slots are flexible total speed of the input line can be greater than the capacity of the path in astdm we have n inputs lines and m slots so m less than n because here n is the input lines and m is the slots so m less than n here slots are not predefined rather slots are allocated to any of the device that have data to send this diagram show the frame and address and only three lines sending data yes with the help help of multiplexing technique systems and also only four lines sending data in this frame and address systems that is done by the help of multiplexing technic systems and this is also frame and address for the all five line sending data now we will discuss about the 
vestigial sideband modulation technique so what is the vestigial sideband vsb modulation technique so we have the some drawbacks of the single sideband technique so generation is difficult in ssb to produce produce ssb signal from double side band signals ideal filter should be used and selective filtering is to be used to reconstruct the original signals and phase shift should be exactly 90 degree in order to overcome these drawbacks vsb or vestigial sideband modulation is used it is a compromise between ssb and dsb double sideband surface carrier modulation so in produce of ssb signal from dsb signal ideal filter should be used in vsb system one sideband and a west side of other sideband are transmitted together the resulting signals has a bandwidth greater than the bandwidth of the modulating baseband signal what less than the double sideband signal bandwidth in bsb transmission bandwidth equal to bandwidth plus v where v is the vestigial of frequency band so these are the different spectrum of double side band suppress carrier single band single side band and vestigial side bands in this graphical representation of different spectrums that is v4 dsb and c4 ssb and d for vsb spectrums in these diagrams so there are different methods of generation of vsb first one is the filter method so in this filter method there is the a basement signal and this basement signal is applied to the product modulator and a carrier signal ac cos 2 pi fct is also applied to the product modulator and after of these two signals product the dsb ac signal applied to the side band shipping filters hf and after this filter the output is the st that is the bsb waveform so generates a dsb sc am signal pass the dsb sc am signal through a band pass filter free with the frequency response is the hf the exact design of the filter depend on the desired spectrum of the bsb modulation wave the bsb filter is required to have the vestigial symmetry around the carrier frequency fc the time domain representation of the bsb wave in time domain representation of bsb wave is the st equal to s i t cos 2 pi f c t minus s q t sin 2 pi f c t this is the 
time domain representation of the BSB waveforms or BSB signals. Here SIT is the in phase component and SQT is the quadrature component of the time domain BSV signals. The in phase component may be derived from ST by first multiplying ST by cos 2 pi FCT, that is the carrier signal, and then passing the product through the low pass filter. Similar, the quadrature phase component may be derived from SQT by multiplying ST by sine 2 pi FCT and then passing the product through a low pass filters. So in that equations S I F equal to S F minus F C plus S into F plus F C. When F is less than or equal to omega and greater than or equal to minus omega, otherwise elsewhere equal to zero. And S Q F equal to J S F minus F C minus S F plus F C. If frequency less than or equal to omega or greater than or equal to minus omega, elsewhere this will be equal to zero. So the spectrum of BSB <coughs> signal is SF equal to 1 by 2 AC into M F minus FC plus M into F plus FC into HF or SIF equal to 1 upon 2 AC into M F minus 2 FC plus F into H F minus FC plus half AC into M F plus M F plus 2 FC into H F plus FC and also S I F will be equal to 1 upon 2 AC M F into H F minus FC plus H F plus FC and also S I F will be equal to 1 upon 2 AC MF. So S I T spectrum of BSV signal is 1 upon 2 AC MT and also quadrature signal SQF equal to J 1 by 2 AC into M F minus 2 F C plus M F H F minus F C minus 1 by 2 A C M F plus M F plus 2 F C into H F plus F C and also simplify this equation and we can write the this signal S Q T equal to 1 by 2 M T half AC or 1 by 2 AC M dash T. Thus the BSV modulated wave in the time domain is equal to 1 by 2 AC M T cos 2 pi F C T minus 1 by 2 AC M dash T sine 2 pi F C T. So this is the BSV modulated wave in time domain form. Next one is the coherent detection of the BSB signals. So in synchronous demodulation technique, here a multiplier in which BSB wave ST and carrier signal cos 2 pi FC is multiplied and after the multiplied, the output of this product or multiplier applied to the low pass filter and output of the low pass filter is the MDT. So SF equal to 1 by 2 M F minus FC plus M F plus FC into HF where M F is the Fourier transform of the baseband signal. The output of the product modulator is 
equal to st cos 2 pi fct taking the fourier transform on both side of this equation so this will be equal after the fourier transform equal to 1 by 2 s into f minus fc plus s into f plus fc so substitute for sf from first equation we get the SCF equal to 1 by 4 MF into HF minus FC plus HF plus FC plus 1 by 4 MF minus 2 FC into HF minus FC plus MF plus 2 into HF plus FC. So a spectrum of the signal S naught T at the output of the low pass filter is S naught FT equal to 1 by 4 mf into hf minus fc plus hf plus fc for a distortion less reproduction of the original baseband signal at the output of detector it is necessary that the transfer function of the filter must satisfy the following condition so hf minus fc plus h into f plus fc equal to in this diagram, the representation of the magnitude response of the BSB filters that is the between transfer function versus frequencies. Examples of BSV signal that is the TV signals. TV signal has a nominal bandwidth of 4.5 megahertz. So this is the example of BSV signal which is generally used in TV or television signals. If DSV modulation is used, it required 9 megahertz for each TV channels. What if BSV modulation is used, the whole TV signal is confined to about 6 megahertz frequency. And we can see these different frequency slots for use of different picture carriers and audio FM, color burst and the remainder of lower sideband as shown in this diagram. That is the between picture carrier frequency versus frequency. And next, what is the advantage of BSV? signals. So there are many advantages of BSV signals. First one is it's offer a compromise between SSB and DSB SC signals. BSV is uh, a standard for transmission of TV and similar signals. The bandwidth saving can be significant if modulating signals are of large bandwidth as it in TV and wideband data signals. For examples, with TV, the bandwidth of the modulation signal can extend up to 5.5 megahertz. With full AM, the bandwidth required is 11 megahertz. So, these are the some advantage of the DSB signals. These are some reference books. 
first one is the canal of communication by bart and ra and second books digital communication by t l singer so these two books cover the this topic there are some multi choice questions here that is the very important and very interesting to clear the concept of this topics so here we will discuss these questions one by one first one is the power spectral density of a signal is option a even negative and complex option b odd complex and positive option c real odd and negative option d real even and non negative so the power spectral density psd of any signal will be real even and non negative so here correct answer is the option d power spectral density psd of a signal is will be real even and non negative so correct answer is option d in next question a modulator is a device used to so what is the modulator device option a differentiate two frequencies option b amplify two radio frequency signals option c impress the information on to a radio frequency carrier option d reduce the modulating power requirement so here correct answer is the d in modulator that is a device and used for to reduce the modulating power requirement so this is the function or this is the working of the modulator as a device and used to reduce the modulating of a requirement in the modulation technique so this is the function of the modulator device in next a balance modulator a used in the generation of which of the following signals option a a frequency modulated signal option b dsb sc signal or double sideband suppressed carrier uh, suppressed carrier signals option c s is i signals and option d ssb sc signals so here the correct option and correct answer is the option b a balance modulator is used to generate of which of the following signal so generally balance modulator used to generate the double sideband suppress area signal so for the generation of double sideband suppress carrier signal we use the balance modulator we have we have also different type modulator what for the dsb sc signals we use only balance modulators so correct answer here is option b next question what are the primary features of a 
transmitter so option a what are the primary feature of the transmitter option a lower clock speed option b lower transmitting power option c higher clock speed option d none of these so here correct answer is the option d none of these because the primary feature of the transmitter is lower clock speed that is wrong second lower transmitter and transmitting power that, that is also wrong high clock speed and this is also wrong so none of these so correct answer here is option d in next the window give a number of option a bytes option b frames option c both options a and b option d none of the so the window gives a number of both bytes and frames so correct answer is here option c in next which of the given device does the data compression so first a is the switches option b is circuit breakers option d is microcontroller option d is the source encoder so here correct option is d because the source encoder give the data and the function of the source encoder is to the compression of the data or signals so here correct option is d source encoder next one is space loss occurs due to a decrease in space loss occurs due to the decrease in phase shift momentum electric field strength and option d is power so space loss occur due to the decrease in electric field strength if we decrease the electric field strength in that case space loss occurs so correct answer is option c here next one is which of the given modulator is a indirect way of generation of fm so option a here inductance fet modulator b r strong modulator option c reactance to modulators option d zener diode modulator so correct answer here is option b arm strong modulator which is used to as a indirect way of generating a frequency modulation fm so correct answer is the option b arm strong modulator in next in fm modulation when the modulation index increase the transmitted power option a half option b will be decrease option c will be double or option d unchanged so option d is correct answer because the in fm modulation the modulation index not depend on the transmitted power so this is unchanged last questions in phase modulation phase deviation is proportional to which of the following 
एंड फेज मॉडुलेशन फेज डेविएशन और मॉडुलेशन इंडेक्स इज प्रोपोर्शनल टू ऑफ द फॉलोइंग ऑप्शन ए द बैंड सॉरी वेव लेंथ ऑफ द मैसेज सिग्नल ऑप्शन बी मैसेज सिग्नल्स ऑप्शन सी एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ द मैसेज सिग्नल ऑप्शन डी फेस शेप ऑफ द मैसेज सिग्नल सो हियर करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी इन फेज मॉडुलेशन द फेज डेविएशन इज प्रपोर्शनल टू द मैसेज सिग्नल सो हियर करेक्ट आंसर इज द ऑप्शन बी Thank you. Thank you very much.